Go to my body. Like, fuck me. The bad is finally over. All the good stuff is waiting for you. Oh my god! <laughs> whoop whoop! That's the sound of the police. Ha <laughs> ha! That's the sound of the geese. Cokehead, crackhead, cokehead, crackhead. Hey, girl gang, what up, everybody? Hello. Thank you for being here. It's so nice to see you guys spend a little time together so early on a Sunday. It's so rare that we do any live streams this early. It's nice. You're about to get minty. Enjoy it. Miss Movie Buff, thank you for the super chat. As a person who loves to go to the movies, not being able to sit comfortably and having to use my stomach as a table, I would die of embarrassment. Um, same relatable let's pull that picture up and let's discuss before we get into anything else shall we uh here we go wait no wrong button Tabarnak. the picture the infamous picture from the movies they went to the movies our lover birds went to the movies and this is in the video that we're about to watch together chantal's edit mind you, Chantal chose to leave this scene in her edit. Okay. Uh, salad being shady as ever, you know, aiming the camera like that. Neither here nor there. That looks uncomfortable. I mean, it's written right there. She, what, what is that? It's almost like she's laying in the seat. She can't sit in the seat. That looks incredibly painful. Look how high up those nachos are. My God, man. My God. Oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if this is like relatable to anyone else, but sometimes, you know, you've seen a picture of yourself and you go, Jesus fucking Christ, man. And that might be what sets off a spy, a diet, a change of lifestyle, whatever. How many signs do you need before you do something, this would scare the crap out of most people, you know? No, she's cool. That shirt also looks like about ready to explode when she's sitting down. Animals Against Chantal Pondu chapter. Thank you for the super chat. I'm glad your little baby's doing amazing. That's fantastic. Good news. We love good news. Ah. <laughs> well, yeah. This, so this, this was part of the edit. She had the choice. It wasn't a live stream. It wasn't like, yes, we've seen every horrific angle that this woman has on live streams and stuff, but to edit a video and make the choice to leave that in, that was a choice, a definite choice. Not many of us would have made the choice, but that was Chantal's choice. So <laughs> that's one of the videos. We're going to do a double react today. We're going to watch, of course, that one, movie night date and more vlog ironically posted onto her main channel, the, the foodie beauty channel. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that couples content a date night specifically? Why wouldn't you post that up on your couples channel? Oh, that's right. Cause nobody watches the couples channel. And if you're going to edit, you want to make it worth your while. You're trying to cash out maximum for it. So you put it up on your main. Then I asked the follow-up question of what the hell is the point of having a couples channel? If you're putting all your couple stuff up on your main to cash out and what will ever make that second channel take off if you don't put things on it? I don't listen. I don't care one way or another, but I see what you're doing, Chantal. Everybody does. Julie, thank you for the super chat. Getting minty and packing candy. Uh-oh. Dangerous. I'm sure you have the self-control girl, but for me, that would be like, uh-oh. Say bye bye to your candies. <laughs> that sounds really fun though. Enjoy. Mm. Mm -mm. So yeah, like I said, we're going to be doing a double today. We're going to watch that one. And then we're going to watch the mukbang that she put up after this one. Pasta, homemade soup, and croissant sandwich mukbang. Ironic that she would choose to eat a croissant literally one day after ripping into the guy eating the croissant on TikTok for clout and blah, 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 you know? Uh-huh. I guess she got croissant on the mind when she saw that big ass one that the guy was eating relatable. <laughs> Where's my movie vlogs? Uh, they don't exist. <laughs> First of all, I don't vlog. Second of all, I don't go to the movies. Indy, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it, Indy. 
So that's the plan for today. If you guys are down, we're going to be watching those two. But of course, before we get into all of that, we have something to discuss. There's been um, <laughs> a meltdown, if you want to call it, a drama going on in the community since yesterday. So I'm sure most of you have heard all about it. Salad is a mod on a woman's channel. Okay, whatever. Uh, Salad was extremely active in her chat and this woman was found. And now people have gone over to the woman and people are speculating what it could be and what it could be. Chantal lost her shit because people are uh, speculating that this might be the other woman. There's some kind of like something going on behind her back, blah, blah, blah. She put out a whole, uh, put out and deleted, I should say, a whole book on the community tab. We'll take a look at it together. Um, saying that she knows all about this woman and blah, blah, blah. However, the other day, while Salad was gaming, this woman came into Salad's chat and wrote a message in Arabic. And of course, Chantal can't understand. And in the chat said uh, that somebody had come in and left a message. A woman had come in and left a message, but it was in Arabic and she didn't understand it. She had no idea who the woman was. And again, that happened on a stream. So that little, that thing has been clipped, that comment that Chantal made has been clipped. It is all over Twitter. And she has the audacity again to lie in the community tab and pretend like she knew who the woman was. She clearly has no idea who the woman was. Salad is extremely active in her chat. Now I did go and take a little peek last night just to see what's going on in these chats. I haven't seen everything. So if, you know, if I've missed it, forgive me. But from what I saw, the back and forth, Salad's participation in the chat, her, what other people are saying, there's, it's a whole lot of nothing. Absolute, nothing flirtatious, nothing uh, weird sounding. No, I didn't see anything. Going back and forth about uh, countries in the Middle East and things about life and recipes and blah, blah. She has a cooking channel. I saw nothing weird. However, weird, not weird, doesn't take much to set Chantal's rage, jealous rage off. And this seems to have really, really set her off. So like I said, she was putting up books on the community tab, of course, raging at everyone. Uh, some people had made some videos already yesterday about this woman and finding her channel and the messages between them and blah, blah, blah. So this, uh, he went up on the community tab. LMAO. <laughs> so stupid. You people are so sad. It makes me laugh at this point. I know you are all hoping for a rage or a big juicy divorce, aren't you? Well, losers, I have some very unfortunate news for you, LOL. Please leave that poor married Muslim woman alone. You really think that harassing her is going to affect me in any way? It only shows you how desperate and obsessed my haters are. I saw you all flock into her chat like cockroaches and vultures to harass this poor woman. You think I don't know about her? Salwa is someone from the internet. Yeah, no shit, but you didn't know about her. We know you didn't know about her. Part of a channel growing support group. She literally mods everyone. Heck, she even modded imperfectly hamsters, miserable, lonely, unfulfilled ass. Look at the screenshot. She modded the other dude in there also. He supported men as well, and they in turn sub to him. Nothing more than formal interaction, sicko. That sounds psychotic. Nothing more than formal interaction. Are you talking to a person? Or are you talking to a letter? Fuck. I saw every word he wrote. Yeah, but the problem is you don't understand it. You don't understand a goddamn thing, not a word. And we know that. We know that for a fact. But we also know that because when she came into his chat, that was the, the comment that you were like, somebody came in and left you a, uh, a comment, but we can't understand it. That was you. And that was her. He doesn't hide things from me. If that were the case, why were you snooping in his phone without him knowing? Clearly, you have reason to believe that he is hiding things from you. And you're curious and psychotic enough to go into his private shit and try and figure out what it is. 
Her husband was right there when Salad was trying to help them with their channel. This was also all public. So no, my husband doesn't chat with women in private, but this was a married woman from a support group he helped a couple of times while her husband was right there, LOL. How many times are you going to repeat that? Do you think just because you repeat it a bunch of times it makes it true? LOL. Also, the kisses emoji was him copying and pasting a title from another channel. I think even maybe Salwa's. As you can see, she uses hearts and lips emojis in a lot of her titles. Go check. So that's the desperate tea. Please touch grass. It's honestly sad at this point. Stay mad, losers, and keep waiting forever because Salad and I are together 24-7 again. If that were the case, you wouldn't be streaming so often alone and you wouldn't feel the need to be going through his phone. So for loser dumbass reaction channels looking at you, Millie Vanilli, who the hell is Millie Vanilli? I don't know who she's talking about. To say he's gone all hours of the night is lies. How the fuck do you know? So the community of shit is just making things up now? LMAO, pathetic. If you think I would let my husband leave in the middle of uh, in the night, you are on crack. Well, you used to be on meth. And we don't think you let him do anything. We think he does whatever the fuck he wants, tells you whatever the fuck he wants, and you're so stupid, you would believe it. You know, just like you did for all those months with Koki. Koki, Koki, Koki. You're a shit leopard who never changes their spots. Why would this be changed behavior? Anyway, circle jerk over this Twitter freaks. You are a sad bunch of humans, really. Stay mad, babies. I know it burns your asses that I'm in a loving marriage <laughs> and not miserable and obsessed over someone's life like you are. But hey, I'll just pity you all at this point. Oh, also something wish version of Millie Vanilli is wrong about is that the women lives in the woman lives in Kuwait. Many buildings look like that in the Middle East. Uncultured morons. You see him interacting with anyone even another married woman, and assume he has another wife, LMAO. He loves me! <laughs> Get over it. Stop trying to mess with our lives. You are just mad. I don't have to invent a man like French Fried Goblin does, anti-Semitic bitch. I hadn't even fucking said a word about this whole shit. Not a word. Why are you bringing me into this? Just to have something to say? <laughs> He's not fucking around with somebody over the internet. He's meeting people on the street and bringing them back to fuck in the red room. Hmm? And he'll keep fucking whoever the hell he wants until he realizes he's never going to get papers from you. Then he's going to dump your ass and find another way to get to Canada. Then he's going to get married for love. You, dumbass, are the only one who doesn't see what's going on here. And Chantal, the day that he dumps you, little piece of advice stay away from the internet for a while because I'm going to be li live probably for 24 fucking straight hours, cackling and laughing like a witch at your dumb, dumb ass. Okay. You are mad that in all my mess, I am still special enough to always, besides one loser, find loving good partners. Well, stay mad and stay out of my relationship. Who are all these good lovers, huh? These good loving partners. Who's that? BB. BB, who I stand by, is the one who got away. Always will be. The best thing she's ever had in her life. And she fucked that up. Before that was Pete's. Useless motherfucker of a human being. Another animal abusing sack of parasitic shit good for nothing. A crackhead who didn't want you. Huh? And now this motherfucker who's playing you for papers. Where's all these great partners you had besides BB? I see one out of four. One out of four who's worth a damn. The other three? <laughs> I wouldn't be bragging about Desperado. Winter Sun, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it, girl. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? A year and a half later and here we are. Jesus effing Christ. <laughs> all right. So after that novel that she put out. Uh, she had a change of heart, of course, because she's a fucking lunatic. 
Uh, wait, where did it go? Here. And she put out this. You know what? I'm done with these posts. Think what you want about us. The difference is I don't feel good after judging others, even if those people make a living off of judging me. I'll just let you all talk your smack and continue to live my life. I will not lower myself to a level I don't want to go to. Get fucked. Get fucked. Lower yourself to a level. <laughs> Bitch, you live your entire existence in a fucking gutter. You're talking about lowering yourself to a certain level. Get the hell out of here. Completely delusional. Completely insane. But she wasn't actually done with the community tab. After that, uh, she was on one about Yabba. And in something I never thought I would see in my whole life, she posted up some rant. I didn't even get the screenshot of it. Talking and linking a video by Life of a Free Spirit, talking about Sam. And I swear to God, this whole attic like crossover thing is so weird to me. The day where Chantal would be linking a Life of a Free Spirit video. It's like, what the hell? What is this? What is this? But she deleted that one, of course. Yes, that's right, Callie. Cuckoo. Both of them. Butternuts. Uh, thank you for the super chat, girl. <laughs> I appreciate it. Not Callie. Yes. Oh, yes. Insane. Foodie is an addict dweller confirmed. Oh, Indy, we knew. We knew. Like, we knew. It's been confirmed. Some of the arguments she's making, some of the things she is saying, it's coming directly from the attic. Every time she starts, she starts shooting her mouth in a certain way, it means the attic is in her fucking ear. Michael Furberger, thank you for the super chat. Foodie Beauty is a trophy wife. Best in show, Iowa State Farm. <laughs> uh, even then, I'm sure there's cows better looking than her. Dolly, thank you for the super chat. She used Steve's tree tent to get in and get out of the damn cinema seat. That would be cute, but there's no way that thing would support her. She would have crashed right out of that tent. That thing could never lift her. I'm sure there's a weight limit. Let's be real. Let's just be real. <laughs> Oh my God. Marvin, thank you for the super chat. If the woman who cooks is also the thong lady, make your move salad. That's a real wifey. <laughs> I don't think there's anything going on between them, but I love how much it set her off. She's not, not, okay. The rage that Chantal was like writing books about and stuff all night. It's not about that woman. There's nothing going on with that woman. It's about obviously what she found on his cell phone. The, the, the fact that she feels inclined to snoop through his phone and stuff while trying to tell the world how much he loves her and she has nothing to worry about and they're together 24-7. She's so deeply full of shit, jealous, hates every woman alive. You know what I mean? I love, I love it so much, so much. <laughs> Michael Forberger, thank you again for the super chat. When Foodie Beauty touches grass, she's grazing. P.S. Moo. Even, <laughs> I mean, yes. And also, I love when she says touch grass as if she could bend over and reach it. Get the hell out of here, foodie beauty. Delusional. Go touch sand on the beach, you fucking lunatic. Lisa, thank you for the super chat. Didn't she say it was a big deal when Allah, a married man, spoke to her? Yeah. So it was such a big deal and they don't do that there and blah, blah, blah. There's always an excuse when she needs one. But she'll always find excuses for whatever shit behavior her loser of a partner is, uh, you know, exhibiting also. I, I have to say, though, nothing wrong. From what I read, there's nothing weird even about their interaction. But the fact that this is her reaction is psychotic. You know what I mean? It really shows how jealous and, and psycho she is. <laughs> there's nothing there. She could have turned around and been like, yeah, okay, guys, go and translate shit. You'll see. There's absolutely nothing there. You're making something out of nothing and kept it moving. And she wouldn't have been wrong. But by freaking the fuck out in the middle of the night, ding, 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 the community tab, it shows that, okay, maybe there was nothing there with that woman. But I'm convinced she found stuff in that phone. Well, she, she told us she found stuff in that phone. I would love to know what she found in that phone because I'm sure it's really eaten at her. And I love that for her. 
<laughs> I cuddles cats. Thank you for the super chat. In honor of my Jewish daughter, F all the way off. <laughs> That's right. F all the way off, Chantal. Lynn Jackson, thank you for the super chat. I'm convinced BB was a roommate only because her behavior is that of a desperate incel. Her obsession with marriage is weird. BB, if you go way, way back to the beginning of her channel, there used to be chemistry between them. You could tell they used to get high at night and like giggle it up and stuff. There was a chemistry there. And then that chemistry died. And you can like almost see the moment that they they became platonic. You know what I mean? But I blame her for that. He genuinely loved her at a certain point. And, you know, he did everything right. He, he would go to her like family functions and played, you know, like so nice, nice with her family and stuff. He was a genuinely great guy and she fucked that way up. <laughs> he deserved way more than her, you know, Ali East. Thank you for the super chat. Can you briefly explain the attic? Well, the attic is he who shall not be named who was removed from YouTube and DC media. He who shall not be named is the <clears throat> boyfriend, if you want to call it that, <laughs> of DC media. And that is the attic. And then we have the attic uh, orbiters who are now Callie, <laughs> Monty, Chantal, and Charlie Gold. So these, when we talk of the attic, that's who I'm talking about. Uh, Rachel, hey, thank you for the super chat. Serious question. Allah's wife wears regular clothes. Is that proof Chins is cosplaying? No, not necessarily. Like his wife wears regular clothes. His wife isn't uh, from the Middle East even. She's not Kuwaiti. There's no reason to believe that she uh, converted or anything. You know what I mean? Why, why wouldn't she dress? Like she's not forced to, you know? According to Chantal though, Salad wanted his wife to be a hijabi, wear the, the abayas. She let us know that in that month when she came home there between the trips to Kuwait, she slipped and let us know. Holding on for the tab. Thank you for the super chat. Love you. You make cleaning on Sunday fun. Well, thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate it. And I love your name. Winter Sun, thank you again for the super chat. And another thing, why is Salad wearing the New York? This, this, this is... The biggest question everyone's been wondering. I have a theory, okay? This is, it, it could be bang on the money. It could be so far out, but I'm going to tell you guys my theory, okay? Brace yourselves. Now, we know that Chantal just found something on his phone. She took his phone. She let us know in that stream. She snooped through his phone and she found something that pissed her off enough that she's been raging at everyone for no reason and really, really set off for the past few days. Everyone assumes it's he was messaging with a woman. Here's my what if, okay? Theory, allegedly conspiracy, whatever. What if it's more than just chatting with a woman? What if Salad was back on possibly whatever app that he met Chantal on and she found him chatting up a woman very much in the same way that she was chatted up. And she may have realized that he's looking for a plan B to get to Canada because maybe he's already started to realize that it's not going to work out with her. What if that's what she found on his phone? I don't know. Allegedly conspiracy, whatever. But I'm just saying, number one, I wouldn't put that past him because the months are passing. Hmm? It's been a while already. He's nowhere closer to getting to Canada with Chantal now than he was seven, eight months ago. This is a guy who's doing all of this to get to Canada. This is all for the papers. Why wouldn't he start looking for a plan B? Smart people have plan Bs. He's not smart. He waited a long time to make it. But I've had that theory going now for a few days. What if that's what she found in his phone? allegedly conspiracy, whatever, who knows? But, uh, I feel like I might be right about that. Um, <clears throat> anywho, listen, listen, we have two reactions to do, like I said. So we're going to start with the couples vlog. Okay. I really, really, really want to see that one with you guys. Not that I don't want to see the other one, but fuck these mukbangs. Literally Sam, thank you for the super chat. I usually watch these with my special gal, but I can't cackle with her today. Sending baby Chauncey some love while we laugh at the gun. 
menace. Ah, I hope little baby Chauncey's doing all right. Thank you for being here. Okay, deep breath, everybody. Let me get the tab and let's get into this movie theater monstrosity. Oh, oh, I know it makes a lot of sense. I'm like 50-50. It could 100% be while they're having a fight and exactly what she found on his phone. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? Rachel, thank you for the super chat, girl. I think she knows the writing's on the wall for the breakup between them both. I can't wait to hear the fallout. Yup. Same, girl, same. All right, guys. So this vlog is kind of a mess. It's just a mixture of clips that I have left over, uh, including our uh, date night. But there's a lot of food in this vlog, so I just decided to include it on my uh, Foodie Beauty channel. So you're going to see a bunch of things from things that I've eaten in the past little while uh, to movie night, to grocery haul, this and that. So I'm sorry for the quick pause, but hold on. The crumb on Chantal's eye. Thank you for the super chat. Smart people have a plan B. Uh, Frenchie, we're talking about salad. Good point. He's a fucking moron. However, do you do you think this fucking moron came up with this plan and how he was going to get to Canada and to hustle a fat ass online to get papers on his own? He's way too stupid to come up with this plan on his own. Mm, a lot of times, the people who participate in this kind of shit, they know other people who have participated in this kind of shit. They get guidance. They see how they did it. They watch how it works for them. And they learn and they follow, you know, what worked for a friend, let's say. Enjoy this vlog. Thanks for watching, guys. All right. So I don't even know when we or remember when we ate this, but it was in my phone. So I meant to show you guys this breakfast slash lunch that we uh, we ordered. It's um, Saj. And Saj is a flatbread, very thin flatbread, popular in Syria and uh, Lebanon, but it's, you know, around the Middle East in general. And they fill it with like mortadella, feta cheese, vegetables, zaltar, labna, falafel, uh, comes with French fries and a huge tub of mayonnaise and ketchup. And we were actually really surprised at the size of this. And we just um, had tons of leftovers. We could not finish this. And they put a slice of fresh cucumber in between everyone. And it was actually really, really delicious. That is an insane amount of food, even if she's going to claim it was for the two of them and they shared it. Holy shit, that's like a party platter for like an event. That's crazy. I don't care how thin the bread is. I don't care how thin each one is. How many of those can you possibly eat? Four? Five of them if you're Chantal? Like, that is fucking insane. That is not for two people. Hell, hell no. And about, I don't know what date this is from. I just found it on my phone. Yeah, bullshit. Bullshit. This must have been from yesterday and she doesn't want to tell everyone. Is she going to pretend like, oh no, it was before my intuitive eating started again. And comes with my favorite pickles, of course. So yeah, we ate this uh, one day, I think maybe a couple weeks ago or something. <laughs> All right, a lot of you wondered if I still eat the diet meals, and I do. And this is one of them. This is rice with lentils and some kind of seasoned chicken with a yogurt sauce and a salad with a quite nice dressing. Actually, it was like a pomegranate balsamic type of dressing. Great point. Videos, pictures, everything in your phone, you can find the date, right? She didn't want to find the date. And I, like, listen, I'm... I'm pretty sure all the food we're seeing in this is just what she ate yesterday. And that's why she didn't want to show that. She ate the delivery breakfast from the, the you know, the diet box, whatever breakfast. Then she ate that thing for breakfast. Now, this is her lunch. Then she put up a mukbang for dinner. She doesn't want us to know this is all one day's worth of food. Because, you know, she's not binging you guys. I think so. Yeah, this was actually a very um, delicious, satisfying meal. And the dessert I had with it this day is some kind of like cake. It had like an orange flavor to it with coconut. It was really moist and very yummy, actually. <laughs> Yeah, here's how I think this day played out. The breakfast from the diet box, 
that massive tray of sandwiches, then the lunch from the diet box. Then she goes to this movie with Salad Boy. They go and do groceries and whatever. She comes home and orders the mukbang food that she put out the, the video yesterday. I genuinely do think that this is all one day's worth of food. She just doesn't want to fess up. And then wait a minute. Okay. Okay. And she puts in the clip of the movie and puts it, puts it all into one video, number one, to make it longer and put more mid rolls on it. And number two, so that we're going to think that this food was actually eaten on Tuesday. And we knew they were going to the movie on Tuesday because she had said it was cheaper on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm not buying it. I think she just smushed it all together. This video is only 11 and a half minutes long. If she hadn't included the video, the, the, the movie clips or slash all the food clips, it wouldn't have been a 10 minute video. My God, she's so transparent. Even when she tries to pull a like a quick one on us like this, you know what I mean? It's just so obvious when you sit back and think about it for a second. Oh my God, Chantal, so pathetic. Rabbit, rabbit sugar, thank you for the super chat. Oh, I don't doubt that for a second. It definitely would be better content. That is mortifying. How? Like, that doesn't even make sense to me. How? 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 How can you sit in a car seat and you can't sit in a movie seat? Oh, my God. Look at the size difference of them. Holy shit. Would you sit through a whole movie that uncomfortable? I wouldn't. There's no way. That is mortifying. And again, remember, this isn't a live stream. This is an edited video. She saw this clip, went, oh, that's so cute. Look at us at the movies. I'm going to put it in there just to prove we went to a movie and left it in. Uh, Okay. Okay. That's, it's, I, I don't even know what to say. Holy shit is the only thing I can think of to say. And she has the nerve to say that everyone's like her size and stuff. Bitch, get the hell out of here. And another thing. I, oh. How do you not edit this back and see this still and have the biggest wake up call of your life? How? I don't get it. Sitting there with your fucking nachos looking like a grown ass moron toddler. Mortifying. Well, everything is closed in the mall. All right, babe. So let's read the movie. What do you say? I, I would say like maybe a four out of ten. It was like kind of boring and low budget. <laughs> I don't I don't know. It was just did Salad really just call a movie low budget while he's wearing that knockoff New York City cap? I know you're not calling something low budget, you fucking failure of a fuck boy. Low budget, like you and your wife. Yeah, you you fit in at that movie then. Low, the nerve of this guy, low budget. I didn't like it. I just was uh, sleeping the whole time. <laughs> you fell asleep. Three out of ten. But it was a nice date night with you anyway. Yeah. Same here, babe. <laughs> Let's go home with Julia. <laughs> Yo, I miss Julia. <laughs> Let's go, guys. I guess someone's scared here. Someone missed their daddy. <laughs> oh. Immediate, immediate divorce. 
someone miss their daddy talking about the cat immediate divorce <laughs> did you miss your daddy <laughs> sweet girl cat's looking at her like shut up and leave so cute <laughs> All right, this is the next morning from our date night, and we decided to have a nice breakfast together from Dip and Dip. If you guys have not had this, you're missing out. It's huge crepe. It's it's the fucking diaper crepe again. If you haven't, uh, we've seen this before. A diaper crepe. And is this really the next morning, or is this you? I see one fork. I see one setting there. They probably assumed it was for a few people. They sent two coffees. Huh? Huh? Is this just your midnight snack maybe after the movie? I don't know. I don't care. Pixie, thank you for the super chat. ALR called, wants our full body thumbnail pick back. <laughs> Grape with two kinds of chocolate and lots of berries. So this was actually a really delicious indulgent breakfast and it was nice to enjoy it with my love. Very chocolatey and so worth the price. It's one of the best crepes I've ever had. Hi, baby girl. Do you like your box? Do you like your box? Oh, yes, you do. Okay, food order has arrived. I'm just going to show you what we got here. Holy shit, they got more eggs. That means they ate all those freaking eggs. You remember all those eggs? They ate all those eggs. We haven't seen her eat an egg. Damn, salad really fucking throws back the eggs. Good for him. Nothing wrong with an egg, but holy shit. I'm surprised that's a shit ton of eggs again. Yeah, two people. Two people. Groceries for two fucking people, man. Monica Bang, thank you for the super chat. She should have just sat on the floor. You're right. In this grocery haul. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So first round here. I'm especially showing you guys this because you're not going to believe how much most of this food cost. No one gives a fuck what it's going to cost because all that, what she's showing us, is all going in the garbage. So take whatever it's going to cost and go and flush it down the toilet and you'll have saved the time of putting those things away. Why do you keep buying all those vegetables? You know you don't eat vegetables. Salad's going to eat all that? I don't fucking think so, man. I hope at least he takes it and gives it away. I say that every time, but instead of them throwing all this shit away every week, I hope he gives it away at least. Marvin, thank you for the super chat. Remember I did a grocery haul before where everything was 150 fills? Like some things were 150 fills, I should say. And you might hear bag noise. It's my cat. <laughs> um, it has been reduced to... 95 fills, which translates to about 42 cents Canadian. That is crazy. So the squash, 42 cents per. A whole kilo of potatoes is 42 cents. Kilo of Kuwaiti cucumber, 42 cents. This is mint and coriander. I use a lot. That is a good point. Ransom 13. Thank you for the super chat. He, he he had a big bag. He was coming with a bag of snacks. Mm -hmm. You're right. Good point. On my sauces and, sal and, and salads. And we have a kilo of eggplants. Uh, 42 cents per kilo. This is like two kilos. We doubled up on this stuff. Per kilo of tomato, 42 cents. How the fuck could two people need two kilos of eggplants? For somebody who doesn't cook, he needs two kilos of dino nuggies and to be left alone with his air fryer. That's all they need. And she needs the delivery apps. What is this? Cents. Kilo of onions, 42 cents. Kilo of oranges, 42 cents. And then I just got some spring onions as well. All right. So round two here, we have some little boxes of tomato paste. Uh, this particular store didn't have tomato sauce, but that's okay because I just blend. I make my own tomato sauce with roasted tomatoes and garlic and sometimes onions. 
And I just add tomato paste and a bit of water or broth. And it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> we have some Lux. Um, this is the first time trying this body wash, but we really needed some body wash. And um, we're supposed to make a trip to Bath and Body Works at some point. But I'm going to try this, actually. Romantic Hibiscus. So, yeah. Yeah, it was probably cheap, so she bought it. We're going to eventually get to Bath and Body Works, but we're living on that budget now, telling us how the grocery budget has, like, uh, diminished and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just buy whatever you can, okay? What's that scent called? Romantic Hibiscus. Mm, still won't work. Sonic Crusher, thank you for the super chat. No, I have not seen it. Yeah, I'm going to try this body wash and see how it goes. We have some shredded mozzarella, Whoa. some more pita bread, just a few things of pita bread. Pretty big staple here. And it's been a while. I haven't had my little buddy here. This looks like a chicken version of Kim Jong-un. Don't you think so? <laughs> the fuck is she talking about? And why would she buy those? Why? Why? She just said that during her binges, she would eat like all of the Indomies, right? Okay, it's Indomie. It's not the same. It's sort of the same fucking instant noodles. If you're triggered by those, why would you buy them like five packs at a time? I don't get it. And by the way, I think those are like 500 calories a pack. I just bought, I finally found the Carbonara ones. Well, it's about a week or more now. I haven't tried them yet, but they're in the kitchen. I do believe it said that those things are like 500 calories a pack. So, yeah, when you have a binge and eat those five packs in one night, that's going to be awesome. Tell us again about intuitive eating. Nixie, thank you for the super chat. Serious question. When at her mukbang coffee table, do you think her legs are out in front of her like an enormous baby? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And like spread open too because they don't like touch each other. You know? Yeah. Okay, so this, they were all out of the cream carbonara and other flavors I liked. And they're, it's because these noodles are becoming so popular. If you have not tried my noodle recipe, or there's so many going around anyways, you have to definitely try these because these noodles are delicious. So I'm going to show you at the end of this video how I make mine because I'm definitely digging into these the minute I finish this video. Okay, we have some lemons, just some Diet Pepsi for me, some Pepsi for Salah, some tissue, some berry juice. I love this juice by Almarai. And this is the most unbelievable thing for you guys. This huge pack of eggs here is 95 fills, so 42 cents for all of these eggs. You told us this last time. No one cares. Oh, why so many lemons? Actually, you know, the, of the uh, blah, 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 blah. the only thing from her entire haul that I'm not even questioning at all is the lemons. I'm a sick fucking, I buy mine like 10 at a time too, and I'll never throw out a lemon. Like, they don't go bad. I go through lemons like nobody's business, so I don't judge. Olive people tend to also be lemon people. Hmm? It's like water for us. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming he's going to use the lemons. Emma, thank you for the super chat, girl. You know, all she eats is takeaway and cheese. Could most of this be for his family? I'm, I don't know, but I hope to God he takes it out and they don't just throw it all in the garbage. Like, every time we order online, we just get everything from that list because, I mean, you can't go wrong, right? So, I mean, hello, that's, that's crazy. Like, in Canada, eggs are like five bucks, you know, for like a dozen. So, yeah. So... Yeah, but to be fair, in Canada, you weren't locked in from the outside. So, some things I suppose are just worth paying more for. Bloop. That is... <laughs> My cat has the zoomies. <laughs> Julia. She loves the laser. <laughs> uh, that's the... So, that's the haul. Just a little top-up of some necessities. And we also did get some cases of water, but I'm not going to show you those because those mini waters, they're also just 95 fills per pack. Good deal. So I'm going to show you now how I make this, these noodles. Yes. Yes. No one fucking cares how you make the noodles. 
She's talking about they're hard to find because they're so popular all of a sudden. These, these fucking noodles have been popular since uh, years ago on YouTube. No one cares how you eat them. No one cares how you make them. You cook like shit and people would purposely not make it the way you make it. How about that? And the egg thing. She does hate eggs. I'm assuming salad loves eggs. It's the only logical thing here because how the fuck did they eat all those eggs? He must be an egg guy. I'm not going to use cream this time, but just watch. Okay, you guys, here it is. My spicy, cheesy Samyang Korean noodles with air fried broccoli with some salt and pepper and a little bit of butter. Yum. So basically, I just used a package of the... Oh, God. It reminds me of a meal. Listen, like in the summers when I was a teenager and both of my parents would be working all day. And me and my brother had to like fend for ourselves. This is the kind of shit I would come out with at like 14. Be like, yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah, I'll wait till mom comes home, you know. These noodles, the cheese flavored Samyang noodles. And I boiled them in a bit of water. Then I added some Kraft cheese spread. Fuck off. Some whole milk. And I let that boil. Add the se with the seasoning packets inside. And then I added some mozzarella. So when I said that it was 500 calories a pack, just by the way, that's like the way that they're packaged. Uh, if you're going to add whole milk, two kinds of cheese to it and stuff, I can't even imagine. What is that? 700 calories? 800 calories? That is not worth 400 calories. That is such a waste. Holy crap. Oh, cheese. Yum. All right, I'm sorry if this grosses you out even blurred, but I had to show you how cute her face is. She's so proud. Recently, I told you guys that she sometimes would poop on the ground, but pee always in the box, and I tried some positive reinforcement methods with her, um, basically treat motivating her every time she um, goes poop in the box, and also, like, just being, you know, wow, wow, making a huge deal. So every time she goes number two, for fuck's sake, man, it's a cat. It's not a dog. How the fuck does a cat not go in the box? Oh, wait! Because it's a street cat who never had a box. The whole world was its box before, so it's not used to a box. You're full of shit, Chantal. We know you lied about where you got the cat from, and this, to me, is just more proof of your lie. Mm -hmm. Plutes Magoots, thank you for the super chat. She and her box, she... Um comes to kind of cue me by doing some kind of cute thing. So I follow her and she comes with me to the box and she does this little twirl around and she looks at me like, look what I did, look what I did. So I had to share that with you. So if you're having trouble um, with that, um, you could also try positive reinforcement to get your cat to go inside the box. So. Oh, she's giving advice. A documented animal abuser, specifically abused two cats, is giving people advice on getting your cat to shit in a box. Here's a crazy, actually two ideas for you. Number one, don't steal street cats. They don't shit in boxes. They shit wherever they want. And number two, clean their box every once in a while, uh, once, you know, now and then. They won't go in a dirty box, you filthy pig, okay? Nobody, nobody wants advice from you about how to fucking do anything with any pet. She's so delusional giving the people advice. Get fucked. Here's a piece of advice. Get fucked. <laughs> Here's a piece of advice. Take that cat to the vet because you still haven't been to the vet. We know you only took it to the groomer. So advice. Take care of this animal. They can't take care of themselves. And if you're not going to, let it back on the street where you found it. Michael Furberger, thank you again for the super chat. She uh, went pee pee and poo poo in the box at the same time. And she was proud and wanted to show me. So I, uh, yeah, I, I snapped this proud moment for her. All right. This is one odd place to insert that clip also it was like food food cat shit in a box and right back to food one of my favorite snacks it's basically just steamed potatoes with broccoli and i put some turmeric butter 
salt and pepper, and it is the most delicious filling, good for your tummy snack. I love good for your tummy if, if she says tummy one more time i swear what it makes my eye twitch every time stop it with the potatoes you're not Jordo. you don't move you don't need potatoes the snack also looks like it was made five minutes after the the raymond snack R ramen sorry um this is all the same night still of eating i i think everything what we have seen in this video is one day's worth of food love it all right guys this is the end of the video so i just wanted to share some clips with you in a vlog so i hope you garbage garbage <laughs> i've been giving them all zeros out of 10 lately that's like a minus five out of 10 that was horrific and we see all through your bullshit and your lies and stuff i did like that she was forced to make herself snacks at the end there i guess there's no more money for uh takeout until payday and she's forced to eat boiled potatoes and shit she can tell us all day how much she enjoys the potatoes she can put 10 pounds of uh cheese on each potato she's still not enjoying it so that makes me enjoy it <laughs> there'll be no food gasms with that fucking potato oh yeah 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 that's right it's a minus five it's a minus five out of ten <sighs> The vlog that was 95% food. Pathetic, man. And I still wonder, why was that not put up on the couple's channel? <laughs> Trying to cash in. I see. Slay and Gem, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. All right, we got one more and we'll be caught up with this lunatic. Pasta, homemade soup, and croissant sandwich mukbang. Let me get the tab. Hey guys, hey, hey guys, hey, how are you? How are you? Well, today I have a meal from my kitchen. So I, I'll explain in a minute, but first to drink, I have some Diet Pepsi. Okay, yikes. And I have a salad here from my diet kit, my meal kit, which I added a little bit of shredded mozzarella. I have... Ah, uh, okay. So before we even get started, here's what I'm guessing from this. She's taken... She's already eaten the lunch pretty much from the diet kit. All she has left is the stuff that she didn't want to eat from the diet kit. So she supplemented by making herself some noodles and a croissant sandwich. I have this soup here. I made the soup myself. And yeah, I made a butternut squash soup. Um, so I got to put this on the ground because here. She wants to stare at the bubbles. <laughs> so I'll insert here how I made it. All right. So the squash are finished. I put them in the oven for uh, maybe an hour and 10 minutes on 425 degrees. That must feel nice in Kuwait, eh? You know, I've said it before in the winter, I try and cook very quick things. Quick things are things that don't have to cook long because, oh, to turn on an oven for an hour and a half in the heat. Fuck all that noise. It just makes everything worse. So in the Kuwaiti heat, yeah, no, run a fucking oven for an hour and a half. Seem very done. I'm going to cut them open and make a soup out of it. Okay, now I'm sauteing some... Red onion, green onion, spring onion, and some garlic, and some olive oil. Okay, so I added about four to five cups of water. And uh, I don't really measure, to be honest, but. Okay, you burned the onions. I can see a bunch of the onions are burnt. And then you panicked and threw a bunch of water in there. Cool. Rachel, thank you for the super chat. And some chicken stock, two cubes. Maggie. Well, Rachel, then she'll be forced to have things made for herself, like custom. <laughs> now, of course, there's some steps missing. I basically just added the squash after that was already cooked, and then I just blended everything, and I love this soup. Remember I had the pumpkin parmesan soup from that one meal uh, weeks ago? So this is, I love it. Okay, so um, I'm also, I have to eat this because it will go bad. This breakfast croissant. 
which I didn't have for breakfast. <laughs> um, and from the, the diet meal kit. Right, right. Okay. This is all this, this tracks like she didn't have that little croissant sandwich for breakfast because instead they ate that entire tray of sandwiches and fries for breakfast. I still think this is all one day of eating. Even I know this is a separate video. I think this is still the same day of food. Taylor Tot, thank you for the super chat. I think it has like chicken salad on it. And then I just have this like pasta, it's like macaroni and spaghetti with olives in Arabic, olive is zaytun and some chicken sausage and some chicken and some, it smells really good. Tomato sauce, I put parm on it. And this is a, looks like a mini saffron cake. I can smell rose water in it. So bismillah, I'm gonna have some of my yummy soup. I tried it. Mm. I put some salt, pepper and some turmeric. That's the only spices um, and herbs I put in it. That's not even soup. Oh, it's thick like mud. I like uh, like squash soup and things like that, but she didn't put enough liquid. Ooh. But the flavor of the spring onions. I see now why people were calling it baby food on Twitter. People were saying she made baby food. <laughs> okay. Like I would still eat it, but it needs to be thinned down a little. What the? I mean, I wouldn't eat it because she made it, but in theory, you know. <laughs> Stasia, thank you for the super chat. Could very well be. Or she's afraid of losing the channel again because of that. Yeah. I didn't have leeks, so I used spring onion. Now. Yeah. It's like a pomegranate dressing. Almost, pomegranate syrup almost tastes like, pomegranate molasses to me tastes like balsamic vinegar a little bit when you mix it with vinegar. So again, I did you see the bits of salad flying out of the thing? She couldn't even close it properly. Fucking idiot. I don't always feel like eating out, honestly, especially lately. Um, as I'm. Excuse me, what? especially lately two nights ago mukbangs from outside it's been a string of takeout mukbangs either he cracked the whip or you're too fucking broke to pay for them getting more into the intuitive eating um i see a lot of people joking about that she intuitively felt like eating half a pizza okay i had three slices if you google that's the norm for people to eat oh my god she's still defending this pizza thing you had three slices three slices was half the pizza and while three slices might be the norm those slices were massive it's more like you had five slices of pizza cut the shit pixie thank you for the super chat oh you can do them in the microwave i never knew and yeah i intuitively wanted pizza exactly that's exactly how it works i could have easily binged okay me binging that's the difference right there a binge would be me eating the whole pizza. Oh my gosh, shut and up! But I had three slices and stopped when I was full. So actually, yes, that was... The idea is to learn how to eat pizza normally, not avoiding it entirely. It's actually very good progress. <laughs> All right, so let's try a bite of this. I'm sick to death of hearing her talk about this shit. Because the more she tries to defend it... The more it just lets every, everyone know that she is still overeating. She knows what she's doing is complete bullshit too and feels the need to overcompensate by like over justifying it to us. We don't care, fatty. Keep stuff in your face. It doesn't change any of our lives. Mmm. There's dill. I'm making a big dill about the dill. I'm actually, I'm all for this because when he dumps her ass, it'll be even more hilarious if she can't afford the two seats to get home and Lord knows she can't sit in one seat. So she'll be stuck there and dumped that. Oh my God. That's even funnier. That's very good. The croissant is good. Mm. Sorry, baby girl, but I hate to drink. That croissant is not good. Not good at all. That's like one of those like croissants from like a grocery store or something. It's not a real croissant. There's not real butter in there. There's those mass produced shitty ones. Oh, 
This food is really delicious. Mmm. I didn't put a mountain of farm. It's bay leaf. So this, they cook all of their meals. They prepare all their meals, which I like. Mm. That's really good. So yeah, sometimes I'll order out, sometimes I won't, but I'm going to have dinner with you guys. It's so insane and so boring. Um, I know people were saying, I wanted to talk a bit about the policies of eating disorder policy of YouTube. So if you look it up, which I have, to, to avoid being ignorant on the subject, and By the way, the soup is like sweet a little bit. Mm. And you just said and twice. I'm so fed up with this bitch and her fucking mukbangs. I swear to God. She can't get a goddamn sentence out. And and this sentence is taking so long to come out because she's setting up to lie to us. I think we all kind of smell it coming. The Armen, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. I think it's more tailored to anorexia and because they have clauses that specifically talk about um, glorifying it, like not eating weight, uh, body shaming, uh, body shaming uh, weight in re regards to. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Don't cherry pick what you want here. There, look at the points right at the bottom. Disordered eating behaviors such as purging after eating or severely restricted calories. You do demonstrate plenty of disordered eating behaviors that such as is just like, for example, purging after eating or severely restricting calories. But your disordered eating behaviors could be, for example, binging, titling your videos and putting things in your thumbnails that imply binging and overeating. Somebody who says that they're diagnosed with BED. Don't play so fucking brand new. You're supposed to be an English major. Hmm? You're going to cherry pick what you want out of this. You're full of shit, Chantal. Nixie, thank you again for the super chat. Um, eating disorders and things like that. The wording was interesting, but there's nothing in there about binge eating. They don't specifically say disordered eating or like binge eating is disordered eating. You have binge eating disorder. Ding, 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 ding. Or you don't. Are you going to now claim you don't? That's It's one or the other, liar. Name eating disorders, but at the same time, they do mention that they want to encourage people to continue to share their stories. So me talking about my eating disorder and showing my struggles and my how I'm choosing to eat in recovery. But you're not in recovery you're a fat ass who sits at home and eats as much food and they can fit into their face every day, any way that they can get it. You haven't gone to a therapist. You haven't started any online therapy at all. You're full of shit trying to manipulate an audience and also somehow revive your channel as a mukbang channel. You have BED, you have disordered eating, and you glorify it on your channel. It's just that simple. Don't talk about recovery until you start doing the work to recover. August Yoonji, thank you for the super chat. I know it pisses me off every time. So fucking lazy. Like she's eating a plate, a bowl. Like you're going to have to wash that anyway. You couldn't wash a spoon and a fork too. Is all considered sharing my story. I'm not sitting here saying, hey guys, come binge with me. Sharing your story is one thing, but you eat every meal on camera and these meals are meals for four. You're glorifying it. You're not just talking about like the foods you eat and the little victories and stuff. This is the only content you have on this channel. 
Emma, thank you for the super chat. Absolutely, eh? That's a good point. After seeing her in that uh, cinema seat, there's no way she's fitting in a plane. I'm also not eating a dangerous amount of food, which in that case, I'm going to lose my shit. I just wanted to throw the computer right out of the window. You eat meals for four people. The video we just watched in this video are clearly all one day's worth of food. And you're going to say that that's not a dangerous amount of food? Bitch, most of us would have been throwing up three meals ago. Somehow, you keep all of this in. A very dangerous amount of food. Case compared to most mukbangers, I mean, they would have to get rid of all mukbangers, thin or fat. Hard disagree. Mukbangers aren't sitting on their platform talking about their binge eating disorder. And they're also glorifying and triggering other people who may be actually in recovery by eating the amount of food that you do. You can't claim to just be a mukbang channel now. You, you just said you're talking about your recovery. You're a mukbang channel with BED. These people don't claim to have BED. Dreaming Fool 2, thank you for the super chat. She's justifying it so much because she knows she's breaking TOS. And this is somehow like an argument that she's not breaking TOS when she knows damn right that she is. But even competitive eaters, that's not binge eating. Binge eating is a psychological disorder. It's not just how much. People who overeat don't necessarily have binge eating disorder. That's where it gets into the semantics and key points here. What fucking semantics and key points? Where are you getting these words from, English major? You sound like even bigger of a dumbass than usual, shoving the spaghetti in your face while you try to sound intelligent. You binge. You have binge eating disorder. It has nothing to do with the other mukbangers. There's no semantics. There's no nothing except for your bullshit. This is your bullshit as usual. Stop it. You know that your content breaks TOS. So... The way I see it, you have two choices here. You either stop mukbanging and you keep making the content about your BED and your bullshit recovery, or you shut the fuck up about your eating disorder and you sit there and you eat your fucking food. You can't do both though without breaking TOS. Lori, thank you for the super chat. So... Mm. Maybe you think a meal is for 800 people, but it's not, okay? Like my video where I was eating a salad and a side of sweet potato fries, someone was like, oh, nice, you're glorifying a binge eating disorder by eating for... That's the example you chose to go with. The video where you're eating a salad. The one video you've ever made in your life eating a salad and some fries. Okay. Why don't we go to the 16,000 videos you've made, uh, made recently eating rice for six and an entire fucking chicken and a salad and a soup and regular Pepsi and whatever snacks you're going to have that night. Hmm? Cut the shit. Cut the shit cherry picking through your bullshit comment or uh, content doesn't change the reality of what you've been putting out Chantal get out of here she's nervous she's nervous and she's doing this as if YouTube's listening to her Stasia thank you for the super chat girl for a family of eight like if you're feeding your family a few side fries and a, a, you're splitting a single salad like somebody should call the freaking uh protective services on you for miss for underfeeding your family because that's well, with that logic, somebody should have called CPS on your mother for stuffing or allowing you to stuff your face to the weight that you were as a child, because it's what set you up to be the weight you are as an adult. The R man, thank you for the super chat. I'm not saying go do that because some people will get that, that idea. Don't do it, but I'm just using that as an example. But that's like, I mean, come on. 
That's not family food. That's like individual. <laughs> Give me a break. So I'm sorry to burst your bubble. But I have a right to talk about my journey on my channel. <laughs> yeah, to swallow before you put another bite in. You're going to choke to death talking to us about your journey on your channel. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck when it comes down to it. And listen, it's a miracle. This channel of yours is still going. We all know that. The fact that she got her channel back after it was yeeted is a miracle. She's hanging by a fucking thread playing some kind of weird semantics game with who? YouTube? YouTube's not watching your video. YouTube doesn't give a shit. Here's my opinion. YouTube gave you back your channel the first time because you used to rake them in a bunch of money. This was straight after Crackhead Olympics. They were used to making a shit ton of money from you. They get a third of everything, right? AdSense, Super Chats. Any money you make, they get a third. They were making a, a ton of money. Your channel has died. Gone to complete shit. You're not worth keeping around on the platform again. So don't be so stupid as to think that next time you're yeeted, you will be back. And I think you're hanging by a thread, bitch. I also have a right to eat what I want. And eat on camera. Because the very thing I'm trying to avoid is this negative attitude towards food as an overweight person. That shame of, what are you eating on camera for? You're eating way too much. That perpetuates eating disorders. So, yeah. Say what you want. It's been working for me. In what stretch of whose imagination is it working for you? You've gained like 40 pounds in the past few months. You have not lost anything. It actually, since starting this intuitive eating, just between the two weigh-ins, you gained 12 and a half pounds. 12 and a half pounds in nine days. You tell me how that is working for you. You're delusional glorifying your ED, trying to revive a dead channel because you can barely afford to stuff your fat face anymore. And you know that the breakup is coming. You can feel it just like the rest of the community can feel it. And I swear to God, I'm wondering, is that what she found in his phone? Plan B. You know it's over. Hmm? It's part of why you've picked up the, the pace eating lately. You're stuffing your, your face full to, you know, soothe your emotions, but it doesn't work. You're gaining weight. You're only lying to yourself. You're breaking TOS. You're hanging by a thread. Oh my God, if it all comes crashing down at the same time. Dumped, loses the channel, can't fit on a fucking plane. I swear to God. Maybe this is the karma a lot of people have been waiting for. Charity McPherson, thank you for the super chat, girl. You know, I'm not trying to be sassy. I'm just trying to be informative. Like, so good. Wow. Mm. She's like, she's like, like a lunatic. Like, it's like somebody who hasn't eaten in a month. The way she's hovering over that table, like spoon, fork, bite of salad, bite of this, bite of the, the, breathe and swallow. Nobody is coming to take it away from you. What is the rush? Ugh. August Yoonji, thank you again for the super chat. <clears throat> my cat is laying beside my Pepsi. Oh, that's cute. Most people just put ice in their drinks, not cat hair. So what are you guys having for dinner? <laughs> mm. Butternut squash was on sale, so I thought I'll make a really good soup. 
and it's honestly so high in fiber and vitamins. Mm. Shut up. I love it. One of my favorite meals ever, soup and sandwich. A good soup and a good sandwich. How much longer is this? Uh, I'm going to lose my shit. Oh, my God. We're like halfway done. When have you ever, ever eaten a soup and a sandwich for a meal? Here you are sitting down for a meal. You got a soup. You got a sandwich. You got a salad. And you've got a massive plate of spaghetti. What the fuck is wrong with you? A soup and a sandwich is my favorite meal. I swear to God. She loves saying these things. She wishes she would just eat a soup and a salad for a meal. That's not a meal for her. She'd be like, all right, where's the meal? <laughs> like God, delusional. I hate, I hate even just when she says these things. And it was so easy because if you want a trick, if you're making soup with squash, poke a hole, a few holes in it, put it on some aluminum paper or baking sheet, put it in the oven for like an hour, an hour and 10 minutes until tender on 425. Oh my, this was in the video already and no one cares. Get fucked, you fucking weirdo and not by your fake husband. Serendipitous Sarah, thank you for the super chat. You don't have to peel it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to cut it because I know how hard it is to cut butternut squash, especially if you don't have a good knife. Like I don't. <laughs> Lazy ass. How do you? How do you not have a good knife? Fucking newlywed, but a whole kitchen full of shit. He didn't buy a knife. I suppose. What do you need a knife for when you never cook? So I should get a knife set, but honestly, I just those are things that I just don't really care about. Like if I can make do somehow, then I will. With what I have, you know. <laughs> We're pretty much just using the cutlery. So Someone had a pretty good kitchen setup, you know, for the size of his old place. Sure. What did he need a knife for? All he did was uh, air fry nuggets. Crafts and cartoons craziness. Thank you for the super chat. I never heard that story before, but it does sound like Chantal, doesn't it? His bachelor pad. <laughs> I got news for you. If you're pushing 40 and you don't even have a fucking knife to cut a squash, you're still pretty much living in a bachelor pad. I liked it there. It was cozy. So that's the policy. You can read it yourself. I can put a link to it if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Nem, that's a good point. He does have to cut his nuggies into bite-sized pieces. God forbid, you know, her son should choke. But I think a butter knife would have been enough. <laughs> but on uh, YouTube with the eating disorder. And I honestly think they were partly forced to add a clause like that because of all the complaints and petitions they were getting about Eugenia Cooney um, and, the, and a lot of pro sites and stuff like that. How about all the complaints they get about you? You really think that you and all of the bingers and stuff on YouTube, y'all haven't contributed to that change in TOS? You really think it's just Eugenia Cooney? And why do you say her name like that? God, that gets under my skin. Cooney? Juno, thank you for the super chat. She's more influential to young people because let's face it, I don't have many young people watching me. Maybe childish adults, but not young, <laughs> young people. And I'll never. Well, if you don't have any young people watching you and you know that your shit can trigger the shit out of people, why don't you make your videos 18 plus then? Hmm? Glorify a binge. Like I said, you can think that you've seen a binge on my channel. You haven't. 
not once. We definitely have. I'm sorry, all those nights she used to spend driving around in the middle of the night, uh, raging and going from a takeout place to takeout place, those are binges. The amount of food we see her eat, those are binges. I don't care what she says. Oh, those are only done in private. Just because if salad's not in the house, she thinks she's in private. It's like the people on the internet don't count to her. We never have. What she does in front of the internet, it's like it doesn't exist. So in her mind is being done in private. She's full of shit. I've overeaten. But so, do, so does anyone who does a mukbang. She knows she's wrong. It's why she won't shut the fuck up about this. She knows she's breaking TOS. And it's also relative to how much the person ate for the rest of the day, which YouTube has no idea. So who are they to say, we're going to demonetize your channel unless you eat 1,500 calories in your channel? You know what I mean? They can't do that. <sighs> and you can do that, but they can absolutely demonetize you for binge eating and glorifying it, okay? No matter how many times you whine to YouTube about it over a table full of food, you can do that. They can do whatever the fuck they want, okay? <laughs> this is the beauty of it. I love, I love how, like, she thinks YouTube is going to bend because she says so. It's not fair. They can't do that. So they'd be like, oh, well, Chantal said so. Uh, Juno, thank you again for the super chat. What if she is dumped, brought groceries, and left? Oof. I don't think so yet. I Because I don't think the rage was enough last night. If she got dumped, the rage would be glorious. But if you're under eating and like, I hate my body, I want to starve myself, that kind of thing. I but you just came off saying you were going to do a 40-day water fast. Isn't that you pretty much saying that you're going to starve yourself? Rad Plaid, thank you for the super chat. Let's take her at her word. Those aren't binges. Jesus fucking Christ, no wonder you're that big. We have seen her eat for hours. Absolutely true. I love my body. No, you don't. I love my body because God made me. Go fuck yourself. Oh, I hate when she starts this shit. Bitch, if you loved your body, you wouldn't be so bothered about what other people said about it. If you loved your body, you wouldn't be so obsessed with constantly pulling at the bottom of every t-shirt you wear, trying to add uh, fabric to them to hide your barrel gunt. You don't love your body. You fucking hate yourself the way I am. I know I don't want to harm it with food, but again, my relationship with food has been disordered for many years. The R man, very true. Thank you for the super chat. Eating for money online feeds into her problem. It certainly does. And no, she said when she got that one one time that she went to that therapist, the therapist had suggested to stop eating in the car. I think it's deeper than that. And she's lying. And it was stop eating in the car and stop eating on camera. But she'll never admit that. Disgusting pig with her fucking mm. fingers. And then licks all the fingers on the shit hand. Well done. Not only eats with both hands, but makes sure to lick every inch of both. <laughs> Hello. Mm. The soup. You can use any squash. Like sweet potato works, pumpkin works. I think squash. Oh, I'm doing it. I have to say it again. 
You're totally right, Brad Vlad. She doesn't understand that since she has a disorder, she can't just eat for money. It's not discrimination. It's just facts. You're absolutely right. She understands that too, but she just, she won't accept that because her lazy ass has always been too lazy to go back to work. Now she's at a point where she's unemployable, but before it was just that she was too lazy to go and do anything else. By the way, I don't know why people like to, to put my behavior under a microscope and label it as good Muslim or not. Like, whether you're Muslim or not, if you're a human being, you should try to act nice. Just because you're not Muslim doesn't give you a pass to be an ass, <laughs> you know? Like, these are rules that it's between me and God. Like, my sins are not for you to pick apart, you know? like a Who the fuck are you to say what we can pick apart? Your sins absolutely are for us to pick apart. Just like anything else we want to pick apart is ours to pick apart. Get fucked, stay fucked. And if you don't like what you hear, stay the fuck off of the internet. Didn't you say that your man can take care of you? Prove it. A lot of people who judge me are Christian. Like, you have the same rules almost, you know? Yeah, but bitch, this is 2023. Most of us don't give a fuck. Religion doesn't guide us in our lives. I don't give a shit. I'll speak for myself. Who the fuck cares? I'm a Jew. Wow. Born in an Orthodox country. Wow. Raised with no religion at all. Wow. Wow. I don't give a fuck about your religion. The fact that we point out that you're cosplaying and manipulating people with religion is just another point of what a sick bitch you are. It's not like, oh, I'm standing up there on my, my, uh, I don't know, Jewish fucking speaking podium to speak down to you. No, no one cares about religion. You're the one who brought religion into this. So eat the shit over it because you deserve it. Dark Tint, thank you for the super chat. Just because I'm Muslim and I believe in Allah... doesn't mean I'm not human and I don't make mistakes and I don't have issues and you know I, oh I almost said something that yeets the channel no one cares has that that doesn't yeet the channel no one cares go go fuck yourself <laughs> you and your fake fucking cosplay you're a joke just because I believe in Allah do you even understand that that just means God we all kind of believe in the same Allah. We just call it a different name. Hmm? Or I, I'm not saying we all believe, but people who believe. She thinks, I don't know, she's in this like exclusive fucking club now. Get fucked. No one cares. I'm sick to death of this arc. I hate fucking Kuwait arc. Not only because it's so boring. I am so sick of this fucking religious talk every day. This fucking religious manipulation. I don't give a shit. I didn't grow up with a fucking religion. I don't fucking care, but I don't like the fact that some bitch comes into a religion to manipulate people and now is going to sit there preaching at the world as if she's not the fucking antichrist. Get off of your high horse, you bitch. You're going to break its back. Okay. Scum, fucking scum. Shitana walking this fucking earth and she's got the nerve to talk to anyone else about the religion and shit. Fuck off, Chantal. So I always find that weird, you know? Mm. I like the salad. I'm, they're growing on me. <laughs> if anything's growing on you, bitch, it's just mushrooms and that's because you don't bathe. Mushrooms alone do not make a salad. Hi. 
That's right, Pixie. Thank you for the super chat. We all believe in the same fucking God. And she she doesn't understand any of this. Ow, ow. Okay, I don't know. I think this is saffron cake, but I smell cardamom and rose water. She okay. I'm not a I'm not a dessert person. We've discussed this before. I didn't grow up with like you eat dinner, you eat dessert. Rarely a dessert in my house. It didn't work like that. Later in the eat, not that like we weren't eating snacks, but like later, you have an ice cream, you have a something. I don't know. The idea that you've just swallowed your last bite of like food, food, and your hands already picking up the cake. Like, do you not take a break? Do you not go make? A nice cup of coffee with that little cake. Like, what is wrong with you, man? Which are very popular ingredients. Oh, I'm actually feeling like I'm going to be stuffed after this. I'm going to be satisfied. But it's nice and nice. That is fucking fucked! Mmm. Mmm. I can taste the cardamom. Yeah, and I can tell by your lack of O-face. You don't like cardamom. Pearly, thank you for the super chat, girl. And clove, maybe? It's a spicy saffron cake. No one cares. I love, love Arabic desserts. Mahalabia. Hawala al Juban. Uh, Basbusa, Panafa. Um, Rose Haliba. So isn't it funny all those months in Kuwait and the most she's learned in Arabic is the desserts. There's so many. Wow. That was a filling meal. Oh, maybe because I ate breakfast and lunch in one. <laughs> well, that will keep me satisfied for a while full of shit satisfied. Did you see her eyes already going sideways to the plate? She's got guilt over what she just ate. You can tell by the way she just looked at the table. Satisfied my ass. You were satisfied half an hour of eating ago, but now she's satiated you guys. It's disgusting. Um, so yeah, I just didn't feel like ordering. We have a lot of food here, so especially after my grocery haul. I made the soup. I didn't think, usually I let fruits and vegetables go to just waste, you know, because I don't, I don't cook them in time. And so I made the soup. I have to roast some tomatoes and garlic and make a dakus or tomato sauce, add to things. Um, what else do I have to make? I want to make these potato sticks. I keep seeing, I know it's a viral thing. I don't think it's viral, but you boil potatoes and then you mash them and put like cornstarch and cheese and stuff. Then you freeze the mixture, like you make it into a block, freeze it for a bit so it's easy to cut. Then you cut it up and fry them. And they're like potato sticks, crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. They look really good. You don't need to be frying more potatoes. Stop it with the potatoes, fake fat. Let's call her Fat Jordo. <laughs> She, re oh no, 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 nobody say a goddamn word. We all get the same notifications. <laughs> Bitch, we were about to be done. In the arms of the angel. Well, <laughs> our favorite glutton has just posted again because of course she fucking did. New Pizza Hut meat lovers melts box mukbang. Do you want to watch? <laughs> And then I don't care if the sky is falling. We're ending it after this. Fuck. Hold on. Let me get the tab. I swear to God, she does it on purpose. She's such an asshole. Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Yeah, I have this hijab to protect my white shirt because I'm eating messy food today. 
hijab as a bib. That's new. Hello, welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, so today I am going to eat dinner with you, and I'm going to try these new Pizza Hut milks, which I don't know if they're like exclusive to the Middle East or not. Uh, but um, yeah, let me know if you guys have them in your country. Um, it I'll show you what it looks like. Let me open up here. So it comes with like your choice of things. So this is that looks horrific. I don't know if we have that here. I haven't had Pizza Hut since I was a child. That just no, man. She talks about all the other mukbangers and the mukbangers and stuff, but you're not one of them because their food looks good and this looks disgusting. Is um teriyaki sesame boneless chicken bites, cheese balls, and a meat lovers melt. It's like a wrap over kind of thing. And so basically, again, food for two people. I th those don't come together, do they? I bet you it's one of those little white boxes with one of those little triangles of melts or whatever, and that's the meal. Some ranch dipping sauces. So, <laughs> I don't want to get anything on my shirt. And some Diet Peps. I don't like to complete words because I'm lazy. All right, here we go. Some ranch. Julia, why are you a Julia? We also have some ranch here. Now, again, maybe you're going to tell me that the Pizza Hut is different in Kuwait than in Canada, but I just went to Google, my friend Google, and I Googled what the hell does that melts ass thing look like? And yeah, in Canada, $8.99, you get one of those triangle melt things, and I suppose one of those other things in the box, and one dipping sauce. So two triangles, two box things, and one dipping sauce here and one in the box that I saw when she opened the box. That's two fucking meals. I wonder if it'll satiate her. Okay. All right, let's try these out. Totally first. agree with you, Miss Movie Buff. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> um, they look good, though. Hey, bite. Mmm, they're crunchy. Oh, man. That sauce is so good. Mm. Yum. Cheese ball. Mm. Oh, completely agree. A.S. It, this isn't about trying uh, Pizza Hut and Kuwait. She wanted to, you know, binge on pizza, so she got fucking Pizza Hut. When I said I, I haven't had Pizza Hut since I was a kid, it's because it sucks balls. And as you grow up, you level up and you realize that that's barely pizza. It's like little balls with cheese in it. <laughs> I think I had them before. She would say no, right? No BS. Thank you for the super chat. She would say this isn't a binge. Anyone else would call this a binge. Now... Pizza Hut for me is a completely different restaurant than when I was growing up. It is because when we were kids, Pizza Hut was actually good. You would go there. Remember they had like the salad bar and the ice cream bar. Pizza Hut used to be a fun experience when you were a kid. But the pizza is disgusting. Woo! This bottle has a lot of CO2. Is that oxygen or what's it called? Carbon monoxide? I don't know what the chemical makeup is for that. Yes, dipshit. It's carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is in our soft drinks. Pearly, thank you again for the super chat, girl. It is all her food, eh? Always so beige. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, man, Pizza Hut was the place to go, like, as a special treat with the family. Where I grew up, Cornwall, Ontario, small place. There was one Pizza Hut. <laughs> I think 
You know, the weirdest thing about Corn, it is, it's such a small place, such a tiny population. If they have, like, there's one of everything, but there isn't even everything, you know, like they don't have an Ikea, they don't have a Costco. There's so much stuff that there isn't in Corn. If they have something, there's one of them. Do you know that there's like 65 fucking Tim Hortons? Every two corners, there's a goddamn Tim Hortons. They're everywhere. There still is, but. She does. Hey, she is talking a lot lately about corn. A little, a little homesick, inshallah. You want the box, don't you? You can't have anything. No, you can't. Um, it was also the like it place to go for birthday parties if you were a kid because it had that like dancing pizza guy, like. He dressed, the employee would dress, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> I think I would like that job. I would come up with a big pizza slice and be like, happy birthday to you. I could be a total goofy person. Yeah, but how would you sing happy birthday if you had walked out in that suit? You'd be so fucking out of breath. Nobody would be here, able to hear you singing happy birthday. Anyway, he would come out as a dress as a huge pizza slice. I remember. Marvin, hater ass beach. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Wait, I thought we neutralized pizza. This isn't pizza. This is, uh, wait, I had to check my tab. What the fuck was this called? A melt. We haven't neutralized melts yet. <laughs> Who the fuck even knew a melt was a thing? But she's neutralizing it. And it made me hungry. <laughs> Why am I eating this with a fork? I'm gonna dip it in the teriyaki sauce. Yeah, I love teriyaki. Mm. But the sauciness is a, a hazard. I like this question. The Scary Pondu Island. If you were a huge pizza slice, what would my toppings be? My toppings would be pineapple and jalapeno peppers. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> So, yeah. Do you want the box? Yeah, Zach Zoo, good point. That's like, I think that's like a liter and a half bottle. A liter bottle. You don't just sit there swigging from that bottle. It's a very white trash thing to do. She who likes to call the world white trash. You pour that into a fucking glass. Make sure oh wait but the wine glass was used yesterday in her mukbang i bet she was too lazy to wash it yeah. <laughs> there's no sauce in it oh yeah listen pineapple and jalapeno is the best combo i love it anyway I had a few birthday parties there. I bet she didn't. Oh, God, is Shannon. No, Shannon's not in the chat. Shannon's at work. Ah! I'm like, Shannon, I would bet anything she did not have any birthday parties uh, at Pizza Hut for the simple reason that she had no friends. Who was coming to the birthday party? Unless you consider you and your sister and Shmi going out for a meal a party. No BS. Thank you for the super chat. I hope the cat does shit in that box. But my mom, like for some reason, wanted to invite like every kid from the from the class. Like, I don't know. Parents just assume that every kid in your classroom is your friend. <laughs> no moron. Your mother invited everyone in the class because there were no friends to invite. And she always invited Kevin. 
Kevin was like the naughty kid. Yeah, Ursinate, thank you for the super chat. Somebody had mentioned that to me in the chat here, that Cornwall is notorious for its feral cat problem. I have not seen one feral cat or just like a cat roaming when I've been to the corn, but to be honest, I'm not looking for the cats, you know? They do have a massive like cat, um, oh, what would you call it? Like, well, yeah, like, I don't know. They, they, they have like a... An organization, let's say, there that specifically is supposed to trap, neuter, and release TNR. That's like a, a thing. Uh, the feral cats in corn. And that's what they do to try and take care of the, the cat population. Pixie, thank you again for the super chat. Pineapple, green olives, and mushrooms. Mm, that sounds good. You're just missing something hot. <laughs> I'll take banana peppers uh, if you can't find jalapenos. They're good, too. He would flip his desk over with him in it. Um, the swear words this kid would say, I think I learned the whole vocabulary of foul language from him. <laughs> in, like, grade two or grade one. So we got invited to the birthday party, and he came along one time. <laughs> And he was laughing really badly. I just remember him like misbehaving and laughing really badly at the pizza guy. Trust Avidity, thank you for the super chat. She just folded a pizza in half to make it look like less. I would love to believe that, but no, that monstrosity is actually for sale at uh, Pizza Hut. But one of them is the meal. She, you know, got two meals. Bye. And I think the pizza guy got kind of upset and insecure. And then after that, we just stopped going for my birthday here and we went to Zeller's. So I don't know if it was because of Kevin, but all right, let's try this. You can bite. So it has all kinds of meat, meat lovers. Mmm. Mmm. I say this all the time, but Chantal and I are complete opposites. I hate meat on pizza. The pizza meats are always the nastiest of all the meats. I like a vegetarian. I like a pineapple and jalapeno, you know, but vegetarian, mm, yeah, okay, all the veggies, give me them all. She purposely will order a thing that has no vegetables at all on it. It's just all the random nasty meats you can get on a pizza. Ugh. It's like a crunchy pita. Yum. And all the meats that would be made with pork since it's halal. It's made with beef or turkey or chicken, but this is beef, I think. I don't care. It's still fucking gross. <laughs> Whether Nobody cares if it's halal or not. Okay, you're not halal. You are haram. Sit in there, gluttonous bitch. Pixie, thank you for the super chat. Doesn't that sound good? It's good. <laughs> That's so medium cheesy. Yum. My God, mm. that thing looks so disgusting to me. Just the way she describes it. It's so meaty and so cheesy. Ugh. I feel like my stomach flipped a little just picturing that. We're, this is the same woman who was bitching not a week ago about lasagna not having vegetables in it. It's so meaty and so cheesy. Cicely, thank you for the super chat, girl. Yeah, I would say if you're at the point of drinking condiments, that's a binge. <laughs> Gravy, too. With the ranch? It's like a Parmesan crust. Very good. Go out and try it. Sorry, it's going to be messy. That's what I like about being me. I don't have to apologize for being messy. You guys just expect it. <laughs> Foodie beauty mukbang, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> so. <sighs> yep. 
Yeah, another thing I miss about Pizza Hut, the unlimited iced tea. Also, they had used to have a lunch bar or a buffet. The dessert pizza. Patrick Duffy Padu. I almost said boy. Thank you for the super chat. Random nasty meat sounds like her love life. Random nasty meat sounds like if somebody actually put their hand down her pants. Oh my God, you did that? What did it feel like? It felt like random nasty meats. Unlimited slices. As you can see by my chin, exactly, Mrs. Dribble, Pickles. this pizza has barbecue. Shut up, Chantal. Fuck. When I press pause, you pause, which Mrs. Pickles, thank you for the super chat. So meaty and cheesy describing her. Mm hmm. Q sauce instead of marinara sauce. I'm glad I wore this because this way, because <laughs> I can wash it, you know? Mm. I don't know how to describe the bread. It's like a light and crispy flatbread. Okay, Marvin Theory, thank you for the super chat. She's uh, She saw herself in that movie seat, and she's so disgusted that she needed a binge to cope. That's all I can say. And now, you know, there's, there's, it's just so different. They don't have the buffet anymore. I don't think so. To be fair. I haven't dined in a pizza hut in years and years. Maybe even since childhood. I don't remember. Hmm. Babe is probably either at the red room, you know, fucking, or at the gym working off those titties. <laughs> I think I went once with Peach a long time ago. Yeah, oh, really? She absolutely did. Two full meals. Mm. That's actually really good, but so filling. Wow. I am actually pretty stuffed. I think it's because of the, the soda, the chicken bites, the cheese balls. But why would you eat until you're stuffed? I thought your whole thing was only eating until you were satiated. Stuffed isn't satiated. You're just a pig. I at least need a break and you know i'll put this away for later maybe, a break. maybe see if salah wants to try it but he has his maybe own when I... maybe see if salad wants to try it salad's not eating your swill man he's trying to work off his titties leave him alone with his nuggies and all of his eggs okay and you just keep ordering your fucking meats and cheeses okay guys so um, I guess that's it for this video. Um, thanks for taking a trip down memory lane. Comment below if you remember anything about Pizza Hut as a kid. I was born in 84, so I know things have changed a lot since then. Probably not smart putting my <sighs> wrist down on this dirty thing. Anyways, okay. Well, you're not smart and that shirt will never get washed. Oh, that was another zero out of 10. Disgusting. I'm so sick of watching these mukbangs where the food is gross. Can't you at least for once get some good food? Oh, my God. If she ever did a mukbang and there was like a massive like seafood tray in front of her and it was all like, oh, snow crab legs and like, oh, oysters. I'm like salivating just thinking about it. Okay. I could get behind that shit. I cannot get behind a Pizza Hut meat and cheese thing. Get out of here with that crap, man. Okay, now I want oysters. Who's coming over? We're getting oysters. Irene, 
happy birthday. I hope you had a fantastic birthday, a fantastic birthday weekend. Keep the party going, girl. Happy birthday. Mm, you down for oysters? All right, come over. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh, we have this place in Montreal. It's mm, mm. They normally like cater, but you can just order. They have a website and stuff that you can order. They deliver to you. It's called uh, Huitre en Mouvement, Oysters in Motion. I've never had such good seafood in my whole life. I think I even put the tray up on Instagram a couple of times. Oh, man. If, if I were on death row, that shit would be my last meal. I love it so, so much. That's the kind of mukbanging I could get behind. Pass. Listen, I don't mind. That's just more for me. Mm, mm, mm. She's over 400. Hell yeah, she's over 400. Okay. Abby, come over. We'll fight over the crab legs. <laughs> I love them. I love them the most. Seafood is my jam. You hate oysters. You only like them cooked like Rockefeller, let's say. I like them raw. Mm, mm, I'm nasty like that. A little lemon squeeze, a little bit of the green Cholula. Fuck it all the way up. I love them. Oh, I love them so much. Literally salivating just thinking about it. <laughs> no seafood, period. That's fine. I don't care. All of y'all stay out of the ocean and it's all for me. <gasps> Oyster po' boy. Mm, absolutely delicious. You can eat all of my oysters, Frenchie. Why, thank you, Allegra. I will. <laughs> I don't care, Tweety. They're delicious. What do you want me to say? I'm disgusting like that. Mm. FFG, we should take the sea food boil to the mountain for the drum circle. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. I would totally be down. It comes all packed on ice and shit. We could totally do that. We're doing it. <laughs> I bet we could get them to deliver us our platter to the mountain. They would so do it. Amazing. <laughs> Aw, Irene, FFG, thanks. You made me cry. It's been not so good, but hope to go out for dinner. Well, I hope the day gets better from here. How's that? I hope you have a fantastic meal tonight. Maybe get some oysters. No, I'm kidding. Get whatever you want. <laughs> but I, I do hope that the day gets better from here, girl. Raw all the way. Yummy in my tummy. I need a high five. Long distance high five. Absolutely. Uzo? Yeah, we could drink a little Uzo with our oysters. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, now y'all are making me hungry. This is what happens. You see? Listen. She does to a certain extent. If she triggers fatties to be talking about food in the way we do when we watch her eat, can you only imagine if you had binge eating disorder? I can imagine that would be massively triggering because it, it's almost every single time. You guys notice it too, right? She eats a shit ton of food. We will talk mad shit about the nasty stuff she's eating, but we usually always segue into our own food talk when we see her eating. It happens on this channel almost every single time. And we're just fatties over here. We're not talking BED and stuff. Uh, I'm just saying... I can see that it could be very triggering for somebody who had BED. Now, <laughs> on to the seafood. <laughs> Listen, we are caught up in Chantopolis. We're more than caught up because we've even caught up on that nasty last mukbang that she put up while we were live. So we're really caught up in Chantopolis for today. I love that. We've been behind for a while and we are not. Ah, although these videos sucked, it was still a great time with you guys. We had a laugh. We had a rage. We had all of the emotions. And a, that's, that's to me, a, a live stream well done. It's like a win if you had all the emotions, right? Oh, see, it's the same. Now I'm hungry. Is it too early for a glass of wine? No, definitely not. It's the weekend. But I'm all like, I was looking at the time like, can I get supper? Like, <laughs> oh, it's only 4 p.m. Okay, I'm going to wait. It is fucking triggering to watch her stuff her face. Yeah, I want to go and find where I can get some oysters tonight for supper. Mm, 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 mm. Whatever you guys are going to have, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Irene, again, happy birthday. I hope you enjoy your birthday dinner. Everybody, thank you so, so much for being here. Had a great time as always. Thank you for spending a little bit of your Sundays with the girl gang. It's always so much fun with you guys. Ah, I love it. I say it all the time and I'm going to say it again. There is no fucking way I would be watching this heifer anymore if it wasn't for you guys. And I really, really mean that. So thanks. <laughs> Whatever you're doing with the rest of your Sundays, take advantage of every second of it. Okay, live it up maximum. The weekends are precious, all right? Be safe, whatever you're doing. Oh, Marvin, thank you again for the super chat. Don't forget the butt stuff. We do food and booty. You're right. 
You're right. At least there's a little depth on this channel as opposed to her uncultured swine, corn ass. That's what you get when you're a cornholio. What do you want? Eh? <laughs> All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye.